in uh, the Netherlands, I believe. Uh, he's going to talk about intelligent operator support concepts for shore control centers. Welcome. My name is Jasper van der Waal, and I will be presenting the work I did together with my colleagues on intelligent operator support for shore control centers. This work is done within the AU project called MOSES. We foresee a future where uh, autonomous operations become the norm within the maritime industry. This also means that there is an increasing need of operators supervising all these various operations. In fact, we foresee a future where a single operator can supervise not just one of these operations, but many different operations in parallel. Within the project MOSES, we look, among other things, in the loading and offloading of containers. Because within the European Union, we have ports like this in Rotterdam that are well equipped to do loading and offloading of containers on vessels, whether autonomous or not. However, in other ports like this one, Mykonos, Greece, are little more than concrete slabs with also limited or no infrastructure in place to actually support the loading and offloading of containers. And what we foresee in MOSES and what we work on is a robotic container handling system that can be placed on autonomous vessels to autonomously load and offload containers safely and efficiently in ports like Mykonos. And we foresee a future where various autonomous vessels can sail from one port to another and when arriving at a port, can autonomously load and offload containers without needing an infrastructure uh, to do so at that port. However, when something occurs, for instance, the weather changes or a sensor malfunctions, a remote operator is needed who can, from a distantly located shore control center, offer support to ensure the safety and efficiency of that operation. We foresee these shore control centers to uh, house many different operators and each operator supervising not just one operation, but many operations at the same time. And they need to be supported in this. So what we work on is an intelligent operator support system, which is a software layer between the operator and those autonomous systems that supports that operator in supervising all these operations. It does so using technologies from artificial intelligence combined with knowledge of human factors to do so effectively. Here we worked on three of those functions. The first being the dynamic allocation of operations to the right operators, the continuous assessment of risks in an interpretable and effective manner, and the design of the interface and interaction to allow such an operator to handle not just one operation, but many. The dynamic task allocation function is about the question, who does, does what? Our support system aims to, based on the difficulty of an operation, the expertise of the operator and its current workload and expected workload, try to assign a new vessel or a new operation to that operator that has the expertise, but also the workload available to supervise it. Based on that, it will assign it to the operator and increase its model of that operator's workload accordingly. 
Our second functionality is that of risk assessment. For this, we opted uh, to model risks and the relations between risk in a graph. Not only do we want to uh, track whether a sensor is failing or the weather is changing or a container is missing, that kind of risks, but we also want to model these risks in terms of the capabilities and functionalities of our robotic crane. So that if a sensor such as a lighter and the camera fail, that you can actually model what that means in terms of capabilities. That without a LiDAR, there's no 3D data available, and without a camera, there are no camera feeds available, both leading to a decreased capability of detecting people and vehicles or other dynamic object in the vicinity, which in turn leads to a quite high risk of safety on the operation. With this graph, we can do two things. First, we can explain what the risk is about, and secondly, provide concrete advice on how to tackle that risk. So in this example, we could explain to the operator that there is a higher risk to the safety of the operation because there is a decrease in the capability of detecting uh, people, vehicles, and other dynamic objects, which in turn is caused by two sensors failing. And the concrete advice would be to, at the next port, schedule a maintenance check on these two sensors. Now, our third functionality is about the interface and interaction design. For this, we opted to use the principle of progressive disclosure, which means that you start on a high abstract level and provide the option of the operator to dive in increasingly more detail. It's about the question what to show and, and when. So we distinguished between three layers of interaction and interface. The first being a global view, providing an overview of all assigned vessels and operations to that operator, together with a timeline. We also present the estimated workload of that operator. And finally, we provide a similar view of the workload of its fellow team members, such that if a vessel is in trouble and the operator can determine that some vessel or more vessels uh, that are currently less uh, work intensive could be allocated to different operators. Then we have our local view. This view shows the details of a single operation. It will present a de detailed timeline as well as, as details on, on the cargo, uh, the vessel, its status, um, and its history, but also provide a view of open tasks for the operator to perform, such as checklists, as well as the assessed risk using our continuous risk assessment functionality. And then finally, we have our situational view. This is a detailed reconstruction of the situation using digital twin technologies, where the operator can use both virtual reality as well as concrete camera feeds to really get a situational understanding of what is happening. So that if an issue occurs, the operator can immerse him or herself into the situation and make a, a clear assessment of what needs to be done about an issue. Now, these three functionalities aim to uh, enable operators to not just supervise a single uh, operation of autonomously loading and offloading containers from an autonomous vessel, but instead supervise many of these kind of operations at the same time. And do so remotely. So meaning that this short control center housing all these operations can in principle be located hundreds of kilometers away from ports where these operations occur. Thank you for your attention.
If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Any questions in the audience? Yes. Hi, uh, Jasper. Thank you for that uh, uh, wonderful, insightful presentation. Uh, I'm Mayang from Center for Maritime Law. My question was, what happens in a situation where uh, one of these vessels is, is in a port where, the, where there's an issue? So the operator needs to communicate with the port. Uh, did you consider something like that? And how does that happen? Yeah. Yes, thank you for your question. Um, we indeed considered this, um, in particular because the operator, of course, cannot do actual things in a port. So we indeed envision this uh, communication uh, line with port authorities to mitigate potential risk or um, to handle other situations such as unsafe uh, traffic around the loading of offloading area or any malfunctions that occur at the, the vessel itself. Um, that communication line is either chat-based where the, the operator can share explicit uh, telemetry and sensor data or a more direct line of com communication where the operator can directly call the, the, the relevant op, uh, port authorities. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. In the interest of time, I suggest we uh, say thank you once again to Jasper for the presentation. You're welcome. And